So why do you continue to do things that you promised you wouldn't do again? Why do your good intentions and resolutions to do better continue to fail? The short answer is that you are repeatedly deceived by an illusion called the soul illusion. I'll go beyond describing it and give you an opportunity to experience it personally. So forgive me, but for this thought experiment, I request that you re-experience a regrettable incident in which your emotional overreaction hurt a loved one. When you have it, please recall the event that triggered it. And then see if you can remember how you interpreted that event at the time. Now, with the benefit of hindsight, what's your emotional reaction to that same triggering event? Are the two interpretations the same? The sole illusion is that each interpretation seemed valid when you experienced it. I'm not making the point that one interpretation is more valid than the other, but that whatever your interpretation is seems valid at the moment. And the tacit premise of each is that my current appraisals are correct. Another way to get a sense of the soul illusion is by noting how much easier it is to recognize an excessive emotional reaction or an example of excessive incentive use when you observe it in someone else than when you experience it personally. In both cases, you're comparing how it looks with how it feels. And it looks different than it feels. But in either case, whether you are watching things unfold from the observer's perspective or experiencing the sequence of events directly from the first-person perspective, you have the sense that you are perceiving things as they really are and assume that you will always interpret the events as you do now. So, for example, when you make a commitment to, say, control your eating or drinking or device use, you expect to adhere to it, and you're surprised each time you fail. But surprise is not the only consequence. Failing to appreciate the soul illusion has a far more sinister outcome. Each time you commit to controlling your appetite or emotional reaction and then fail to do so, you've made a liar out of yourself. And the penalty for this failure is the loss of power or future commitments. Do this too many times and you lose control. You lose the power to govern yourself. And this is a big loss. It's how people wind up living under the bridge. The thought experiments ahead will give you the opportunity to experience optical illusions from the first-person perspective that is taken in by the illusions and from the researcher's perspective who is at some distance observing how you perceive the illusion. As you shift back and forth between these perspectives, you'll be mindfully working with your subjective experience. Now, while we'll be working with optical illusions, the soul illusion is a more general principle that applies to all your perceptions and refers to the tacit premise that your experience of reality, while an amazing creation of your nervous system, is just that, the creation of your nervous system, and is not the same as objective reality, no matter how certain you may feel that you see things as they are. In ancient times, the oracle of Delphi warned, Certainty brings ruin. Swami Vyandananda agrees and recommends that you curb your dogma. Abstractions are easier to change than habits. 
So overriding the dogma that you see things as they really are is easier said than done. Even if you agree with these abstract arguments, your default will still be to automatically accept the first interpretation your nervous system puts forward. And so when you encounter one of those situations that evoked an unwanted reaction in the past, you'll probably react the same way again. That is, unless you're prepared, not just intellectually, but experientially, to respond mindfully to the things that happen. The optical illusions ahead appeal to a more potent determinant of your emotional reactions than your intellect. You'll be developing the capability to work with your perspective intentionally. The way to use these images as a training tool is to look at them with no preconceptions and allow yourself to be taken in by them. Once you experience the effect from the first-person perspective, shift to the researcher's perspective and observe how a soul such as yourself perceives the illusion. Switch back and forth between these perspectives, noting how it feels to be taken in and how that process looks from the observer's perspective. Later, when we examine the causes of unwanted emotional or motivational reactions, we'll be focusing on the space between the stimulus and the reaction. That's where your will lives. Now we'll be working with visual stimuli because this visual medium is well suited to demonstrate how your perceptual apparatus creates meaning from a stimulus and in so doing can produce distorted interpretations of the reality. But the soul illusion applies to all sense modalities, not just vision. In fact, the foundation of your subjective reality is the soul illusion. So to begin to make the case that what you perceive is created by the brain, notice the black dots at the intersection of some of the lighter lines in this figure. They exist only in your brain. There are no black dots on the screen, only white dots. On the other hand, there really are black dots at the intersections in this figure. Twelve to be exact. I bet you can't see them all at one time, even though they're always there. Now here's an illusion that's hard to believe. These tabletops are identical. But watch this. While it's hard to believe, squares A and B are the same shade of gray. To prove that your eyes deceive you, the figure on the right includes two uniformly gray bars, which I'll now highlight and magnify. Notice that the gray shade is uniform throughout. The objective of this video was to demonstrate that what you regard as reality is actually a fiction that you create. This may sound like a limitation, 
But this realization gives you the power, in fact, the responsibility to choose how you interpret the things that happen and ultimately how you react to them. So consider how a photographer determines the viewer's interpretation by choosing the angle from which to take the photo. In the same manner, you can influence your reaction to the things that happen by mindfully choosing the perspective from which you interpret them. These forced perspective illusions are intended to elicit a false interpretation, to emphasize the point that manipulating your perspective can distort your interpretation of what you see. Now, it's unambiguously true that the Eiffel Tower is larger than a human hand, and so the illusion is striking. But the interpretation of the events that actually happen is genuinely ambiguous. There may be many equally plausible interpretations. The reactions you experience in real time depends upon your particular interpretation of the events that happen. For example, this is an ambiguous figure that you can interpret either as an attractive woman or as flowers and a butterfly. Notice that you can passively allow your interpretation of the visual stimuli to shift back and forth on its own. Or you can intentionally choose which will be the prevailing interpretation that determines your reaction.